In this video, we're going to continue working with Django Crispy Forms and HTMX, and we're going to extend the form that we built in the previous video to include some validation checks for the username and for the subject field within the form. And in addition to that, we're going to demonstrate how to use the HX swap out of band attribute, which has not been shown before on this channel. So that's coming up later in the video. And we're going to start by checking whether or not the username field is valid using HTMX. Now, currently, if we enter a username that is two characters long and we try and register this user, we're going to see that we get back the form with the username is too short that validation error there. Now what we want to do is we want to actually display that before we submit the form. So while the user is typing, we want to show these types of messages. And we're going to wire up the username field on our form class with some HTMX attributes in order to do this. So let's go to our forms.py file. And the username is defined here within the fields of this model form. Now what we're going to do is to add HTMX attributes to a form field, we need to define the attributes dictionary. So we need to use a widget for that. So the username widget that we've got by default is forms.text input. And to that, we're going to pass an attributes dictionary that specifies our HTMX attributes such as HX get. Now the get endpoint that we're going to use, we're going to reverse a URL called check username that we're going to create in one minute. And we're also going to specify an HX trigger attribute here. And this is going to be triggered on the key up event. So we can save that and now we can go and create this URL here within our URLs.py file. And I'm going to paste that in below the logout endpoint. We'll fix the indentation here and a comma as well. So we've got a check username uh, URL now and we're going to load up a view called check username. So let's copy that and go to views.py. We'll define that function here. And what we're going to do within this function is we're actually going to instantiate the university form class and we're going to pass to it the get request parameters that are coming from this hx get call. So within our view, let's define a form and it's going to be equal to the university form with the get request parameters passed in. Now we can print out the get request parameters uh, to see what they look like. And for now, what we're going to do is return an HTTP response with the string hi and we'll replace that in a minute with the proper response. So if we save that and go back to our form, we should see that because we have a key up event here, as soon as we start typing, the whole form is now replaced with hi. Um, so that's not ideal, but we can see now that the HTMX is actually working. So let's now fix the target to replace only the field itself, the username field, instead of the whole form. So refresh the page. And what we're going to do is inspect the DOM. And we want to replace the entire div containing this username field as rendered by Django Crispy Forms. And that's this div here. It's got an ID that's automatically generated. It's called div underscore ID underscore username. So let's copy that. And I'm going to make that the target for our HTMX request here. So the HX target attribute is going to be an ID. So the hash with that particular ID there. So save that and we should now be able to see that when we start typing in this field, it's only the username that is replaced with the message hi. And we can see the rest of the form is preserved. So what we now want to do is we want to validate that username field and return that field itself, only that field, not the entire form. And to do this, we're going to make use of a template filter from Django Crispy Forms. It's called as crispy field. Now you can use that within your templates, as you can see here, as a template filter. What we're going to do is actually invoke that from our view, and we're going to pass the username field to this crispy field. As you see, it takes a field as its first parameter. We're going to pass our field to that, and it's going to generate the HTML that we're going to return to the front end, and HTMX will swap that into the DOM. So let's see exactly what I mean by that now. If we go back to uh, VS Code, at the top of our views file, I'm going to bring in an import from Crispy Forms, and it's this as Crispy field template filter that I, I'm importing now. Now, if we go down to the check username view here, I've been printing out the request.get. That, as you can see here, it gives you a query dictionary with the username um, and a value there. Now, that's sent by HTMX, and that's what we're actually passing into the university form so that accepts um, that particular dictionary with a username and that will then validate the username field that you see here 
based on this clean username function and that's why that's working but now we're going to replace it with this as crispy field template filter so i'm going to replace this print statement here and we're going to use the as crispy field function um, and we're going to pass to that our username field within the form so to get the field we simply use that syntax there form username and then if we print out what we get back here when this request is sent we need to invoke the request by typing and then what we actually get back here if we scroll down is some html and this is exactly what we want we want to get this html here it's the div with the id username that we are setting as a hx target it's going to return all of that back to us and then we will swap that back into the dom with any errors any validation errors showing as well so what i want to do is as an http response instead of returning hi we're going to return this here uh, so let me just paste that in to the HTTP response. So we'll get another print statement and it's the as crispy field function. We pass the our forms username field and that's what's returned as an HTTP response. So let's save that and go back to the front end here. And now we should see that as we type here, we are getting um, these validation errors showing up before we actually hit submit. And while we've typed less than or equal to three characters, we're gonna get this username is too short error. As soon as we go beyond that, the errors are cleared out and the return call from this as crispy field function has no errors. So when we swap it back into the DOM, we get no errors shown. And just as a reminder that the requirement for the username to have more than three characters is coming from the forms clean username function that we defined in the last video. And if the length of the username is less than or equal to three, we raise that validation error. And this validation also works with other requirements so for example if I try to enter a username that already exists in the database you see that we get an error here saying a user with that username already exists and we can also attach trigger filters because we know the username needs to be more than three characters we could go to our hx trigger here and we can add a trigger filter to this key up event and the filter we're going to add we're going to ensure that the target dot value which is what is being sent we want the length of that to be more than three characters so that way we will avoid ever sending these requests if the username is three characters or less and we can use that in tandem with the forms clean username method to make sure that no usernames are ever sent to the server with less than three characters and we can also add additional attributes to the trigger for example we could specify that only if the actual text has changed that we want to send the request and using the changed filter gives you some better user experience at times for example if you are highlighting the text within the text input using the control a keys that would then allow you to do that without sending an htmx request so for example if i go to the form and we press Control a here or command a on a mac that will highlight the text but it's not going to send the htmx request because the actual value of the input hasn't changed even though we're pressing the keys so this is a pretty handy little filter here the changed um, you can use that in tandem with key up and we'll keep it like that for now so that's the first part of this tutorial i want to now add a second validation function we've got the clean username and now we want to add a, another function called clean subject and this is going to be responsible for validating the subject field that we've got within our model forms field so to that we're going to extract the subject that's been chosen by the user with the self.cleaned data dictionary and once we have that what we're going to do is we're going to check whether or not there are spaces available on the chosen course so before we do that we're going to check how many web development students are in the database now i've been creating users in this form so i always pick web development when i'm very quickly doing this because it's the first one selected so what i want to do is check how many i've got and then we can add the validation function to see if this is working so if we load up the shell plus i'm going to execute this statement here which looks for how many students there are with web development as their chosen subject this returns two in this case so what i'm going to do is add a validation here i'm going to say if user.objects.filter and we're going to use the subject field here and we're going to say if it's equal to the subject that has been entered we're going to filter all the objects in the database equal to the chosen subject for example web development and then we're going to get the count to see how many there are in the database and we're going to say if that's greater than three or equal to three in this case 
we're going to raise a forms.validation error and we're going to say there are no spaces on this course. So let's walk through this validation function quickly. The user has selected a subject and that's retrieved here on line 49. And we then check to see how many other students are studying that subject in our database. And if it's three or more, we're going to raise a forms.validation error. We don't want to allow the user to enroll on that course. And instead, we're going to send an error to the front end. Otherwise, we can return the subject itself, as all will be good in that case. So this is a very simple way to, that you can imagine that we're checking to see if any spaces are available on a course. So let's now add HTMX attributes to the subject field. And to do that, we've got the subject up here. It's a choice field. I'm going to add the widget here to that. And we're going to say that this is a forms.select widget. If we go back to the front end, you should see that this is actually the way uh, as by default. We still have the same widget here. It's the forms.select widget. But what we can now do is pass some attributes to that in the form of a dictionary. And we can pass the hxget attribute here. And I'm going to reverse lazy another URL called check subject that we're going to create in a second. And we can also pass our target. hx target is going to be a div with the ID of div ID subject. This is very similar to the div here, div ID of username. In this case, the subject field has that particular ID um, with the enclosing div here, as you can see here. So we're going to replace that in the DOM. So we need to set that as our HX target. And finally, we're also going to set the trigger. And in this case, it's going to be the change event. And because it's a drop down box, whenever that's changed, we can trigger the HTMX request. So let's now quickly add this URL called check subject. So in urls.py, we'll create a new URL here. And we now need to create the view called check subject. So if we go to views.py, we're going to copy this. It's going to be very similar. And we'll paste that here and we'll call it check subject. And the only thing changing in this view is the actual form field that we pass to the as crispy field template filter. In this case, it's going to be the subject field. So we can pass that there and we can now return to our form here. And let's submit a new user here. Um, we'll just create a random user and we'll select web development here. There are two students studying that at the moment. So there should be no problems here with us selecting web development. If we submit that, we get the profile page, so all is good there. We now have three users in the database studying web development. Now, because of our validation check within forms.py here, and this is defined down on line 53 here, we should now see that because we have three users studying web development, when we actually select that, HTMX should re-render the form with the validation errors. So let's go back to the front end and we can check this out now if we select a random user here. And by default, because web development is automatically selected, there are no validation errors at the moment. It's only when we change it back to web development, you see that we now get the message, there are no spaces on this course. And this comes from the validation error message that we pass on line 56. So that's working now. And we're going to go to the final part of this tutorial where I'm going to show you how to do an HX swap out of band. And the reason we want to do that, for example, right now we have a validation error, but we can still actually submit the form. What I'm going to do is disable the submit button if there are any validation errors within the particular field that's being validated. So let's start by changing the structure of this a little bit. I'm going to create within our templates a partials directory. And within that, we're going to create a field.html. And this is going to be responsible for rendering the field with any error messages. Now we'll come back to this in a second, but let's go back to our views and we're going to change both of these views here. And we're going to add a context dictionary to both of these with a field equal to what's returned by the as crispy field function here. So I'll remove this statement here and we call as crispy field with the username field. And we're going to set that to the field within the context. And secondly, we're going to return a Boolean called valid as a key. And that's going to check whether or not the username field has any errors. So we'll access the username field and it has a dot errors attribute. If that's true, there are errors. So it's invalid. We're going to set a variable called valid. So we'll invert that with the not operator. And finally, we're going to return the rendered partial that we've just created field.html and we'll fill that in in a second and the second thing we're going to do is we're going to basically copy this code down to our check subject view as well and we'll change the fields to subject in this case 
And once you've saved that, you can go to field.html and we're gonna render this field here. So to do that, we'll simply use the field and we'll use the safe template filter as well to tell Django that it's safe to render that as HTML. And what we now want to do is replace this submit button. And if the valid Boolean is true, as you can see here, if it's valid, we'll let the user submit. But if the valid Boolean is false, we want to actually disable the button. Now we can use hx swap out of band. This is an attribute that allows you to specify content in a response that should be swapped into the DOM somewhere other than the target. Now that's the key part of this attribute. It allows you to send back HTML that's not swapped into the target but swapped somewhere else in the DOM. So what we want to do is we want to swap in this particular input button. And if we inspect this submit button, you see that it's got an ID here of submit-id-submit, and this comes from Django Crispy Forms, but we're gonna specify that ID and we're gonna swap it back into the DOM as an out of band swap. So we're basically gonna copy the input button that we've got here. So if you right click that uh, in your developer tools, you should be able to copy the element. We can then paste that within our field.html and that's it there. So what we're going to do to this, if I clean it up a little bit here, is we're going to add the hx swap out of band attribute to this button. Now in the case where the valid context variable is true, we don't want to disable the button. So we're going to specify hx swap dash out of band and it's going to be equal to true, but we're not going to specify the disabled prop here we're just gonna leave that off and say that that's true there. So that's if it's valid. If it's not valid, we'll use an else block for that. And we're gonna copy this input here and we're gonna paste it into the else block. Let's fix the indentation a little bit. And to this one, we're gonna specify disabled as a prop here because if it's not valid, we want to disable the submit button. So that's all for the if statement and that's actually all we need to do in this field.html template. So if we save that and go back to the page and refresh, if we have a username that's now too short, you see that the actual submit button has been disabled and we can't click that anymore until we have a valid username. And if I enter a username that exists in the database already, the submit button is also disabled. As soon as we get a valid username, it's re-enabled. So that's all working fine. And we can also see that this works with the subject field. If web development is selected, there are no spaces on that course and the submit button is therefore disabled. Now this isn't perfect. If we have two validation errors in different fields and we fix one of them, even though the other one is still an error, we can actually now submit the form. And that's because if we look at the validation going on in the view, we're only looking at a given form field when we're setting the valid variable. So for example, here, when we're checking the subject, we only check to see if the subject field has any validation errors when we're setting valid. And if there are no validation errors, even if there are validation errors elsewhere in the form, this is gonna evaluate to true, and therefore it's not gonna have the disabled prop here. So you can fix that if you want. One thing you could do is only check if there are errors on the form itself, anywhere on the form. It's possible to do that as well. But for demonstration purposes, I'm keeping it to a single field at a time so that we can see this interactively as we fix any errors on the page. So that's all for this video. In this video, we've demonstrated how to validate fields how to use HTMX with Django Crispy Forms in order to send requests and update forms without refreshing the page. And we've also seen the HX swap out of band attribute. And we've used that to disable this button here, the submit button, whenever there are validation errors on our form. So thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.